Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our circuit service here this evening. My name is Andrew Emerson. I'm one of the team of eight ministers here in our circuit, seven presbyters and uh, one deacon. And it's uh, my privilege to welcome you here to worship this evening. For we gather as a circuit, we gather from our villages, from our towns and from our city. We gather in the spirit of God to worship the God who loves us, the God who meets us as creator, saviour, comforter, advocate and guide. So as the orchestra is tuning up, let's join together in Matt Redmond's worship song. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. orchestra and singers arranged produced and conducted by Craig McLeish so as we continue our worship we come now to our prayers let's pray to him let everything that has breath praise the Lord living Lord God Father Son and Holy Spirit we do indeed praise you for who you are for you are the one who created all things, who redeems all things, who sustains all things. 
we thank you for coming to us in Jesus. That in Jesus you lived our life, you died our death, and you were raised again to be that prototype of that new creation, that new indestructible eternal life in you. And as we reflect on who you are and your goodness to us, so we become aware of our own shortcomings and we are sorry, Lord God, for all the ways in which we are a part of this world's brokenness. And we marvel, Lord God, that as we say sorry, so you are always ready to forgive us. And we marvel still further that you still want to partner with us in that great story of your love. So as your word ministers to us this evening, we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit upon us, that though we are separated, yet we might be bound together, that we might find the tongues, the language to speak into this culture of which we are a part. We pray that we might know that we are citizens of your kingdom. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. kingdom come Lord teach us how to pray for all to know your joy your peace and love and know your friendship each and every day the breath of Christ the Father's chance
Friends, we continue as we say together the Lord's Prayer, the words for which are on the screen. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And that song, Thy Kingdom Come, comes to us courtesy of the Thy Kingdom Come uh, movement, which is an initiative of the Church of England, the Methodist Church and many other churches around the world, inviting the whole world to, uh, to offer prayer to God, the God who longs to hear from us, the God who we're able to bring everything that's on our hearts, everything that's in our souls. And for that, we're grateful to God's grace. We're going to hear our reading now, and it's the reading of Pentecost. And it's brought to us tonight by some of our local preachers from around the circuit. And so we're very grateful to Heather Rowland from Oakmere, to Sean and Peter Davidson from our Runcorn section, and to Mike Ridley from Bunbury. And friends, I hope you'll agree that in our circuit, you can't get much more socially distanced than that. And so our reading then, the story of Pentecost as Luke reports it to us from Acts chapter 2. Acts 2, verses 1 to 14 and 22 to 41. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Midas, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are Israelites, Listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us today. 
Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. So our thanks to our friends there from around the circuit. Now, our brother and colleague David Bintliff has been leading our circuit in all things tech since the lockdown and uh, he's been taking a few days off with uh, Gemma and with Karis and, uh, and he's back this evening to preach for us and to be honest, we're glad he's back. It might look like I'm in charge here this evening but actually David is there and helps me pressing all the buttons to make this happen and we are grateful as ever. And now David is going to bring us uh, God's word. Thank you to Andrew for his introduction and his work in preparing our worship for this service. It's a huge privilege to be able to offer a word for this evening, and yet it's also difficult. Much of my reflecting over these last past nine weeks has led me to a place where I've been, like those first disciples, locked away in fear. But that fear and lockdown ends for them in this great moment of triumph. Acts 2 is an amazing reflection by Luke on the mo moment that the movement of God becomes the movement of God's people. It's energetic, enthusiastic. It is for preachers the Sunday where we hope our sermon will be accompanied by choirs of angels and for the church, figuratively I hope, to go up in flames. It is the time when we talk about the people of God becoming motivated into breaking down the barriers and shouting the love of God to whomever gets too close. But we find ourselves still, generally, within the lockdown. Some of us might be returning to work, others might be going for an extra work, walk each day, but we still find ourselves held within our COVID conditions. Our capacity to gather together as those first disciples did, still breaks lockdown measures. Although I believe we've just been told by Monday, we can start to meet as six people uh, in an open space. And yet, from the passage, still springs forth a message of hope. We are not alone in this. In the chaos and frustration, in the uncertainty and fear, in the grieving and questioning, we are not alone. Alongside Peter's exceptional sermon, Acts 2 shows us that we are not alone. And as we reflect on the steps and stages we find ourselves within, it is a blessing to recognise God there with us in all of this. Pentecost becomes important today because in our isolation, God brings unity. The words of Joel are clear. 
In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Everyone. No status requirements. All of us, warts and all, being so loved by God, we are met by God's presence. The passage goes further by showing that unifying presence in the ability for all to hear and know what the disciples are talking about. In our isolation, where communication has been so much different to what we've been used to, where our lives can feel no more than the four walls we're in, God comes to unify us into his presence and remind us we are part of a world together in need of his hope and love. Pentecost becomes important today because in our finding of the new normal, God gives us the boldness we need. Just think for a moment about all the stuff that must have been going through the disciples' heads. What would like life look like post-Jesus? What would they be able to do? How would they engage in the mission Jesus had left them with? How would they survive in a world searching to quell the, these Jesus followers? into that nebulous uncertainty, into that action of grasping at their new normal, God shows up and more than that gives them the courage, wisdom and will to start putting the new normal into action. Peter, this guy who a few weeks back denies he even knows the man from Galilee, is emboldened to proclaim the love, hope, grace and favour of God through Christ Jesus. Peter begins a new normal, but he does not do so through his own strength or activity, but by finding strength in the Spirit of God. As we continue to figure out our new normal, especially for our churches and ministries, lay and ordained, it's important we don't try to move back into our own strengths and instead seek wisdom, guidance and power from the God who moves between us. Put simply, if Peter had used his own strength and wisdom, the new normal would have been a couple of fishing boats off the shore near Capernaum. The disciples let God get involved and so the message of grace spreads across the known world and continues to be preached, even in these difficult times. Pentecost becomes important today because as we worry about our future, our jobs, our families, our church, God sends us clarity in the chaos. God promises us another, a helper, an advocate, a friend. Yes, the Spirit comes with great power and energy, but it also stills hearts and prepares the paths and allows those who witness its working to recognise the presence of the one who made all things intertwined within their very self. Peter, during his sermon, turns to the words of King David. I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Peter reflects on these words, and through them expresses the hope found in the resurrection of Jesus, of the new life we are offered in him. But they also tell us, I hope, that in all we face God is before us at our right hand and that even in our most shadow-filled moments he will never let us go. Pentecost becomes important today because as we reflect on the future of our mission. The Spirit equips and encourages us towards the mission of God. It may be an obvious point, but it's one that comes out of the expressions of those already said. The mission isn't ours. We are not mandated to it alone, but equipped and encouraged by the God whose Spirit dwells in all flesh. By God's action, our voice takes on the tongue needed to speak into the moment and offer the hope, the truth, and the love we find in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, if we allow a romantic of in interpretation of the early church to permeate too greatly, we miss what the witness of the Acts of the Apostles actually shows us. 
Pentecost is not the end of the pains, frustrations and confusion for the early church. In many ways, it's the beginning of them. Yet in each step, in each moment of joy and pain, every time the church acts for justice or shows loving kindness, in every decision and discernment, the church becomes ever more edified and sustained because God's spirit is found within it. As we struggle forward, may we also strive to find the spirit at work within and around us. As we move towards Pentecost, we find ourselves within the time announced by the church internationally to be dedicated to prayer. Thy kingdom come. A time for the church to pray for God's hand, God's will and spirit to be at work within the world around us. So may we continue to pray for the work of God, the action of God to fill our world, and for each of us to know ourselves loved, affirmed and equipped to take part prayerfully in that mission. Amen. We're going to sing now uh, our next song for this evening. Um, it incorporates uh, Gabriel's oboe and is it's one of those pieces of music that I've picked up while being uh, in the circuit. Um, it is Holy Spirit, living breath of God. Show your power 
once again on earth cause your church to hunger for your ways let the fragrance of our prayers arise lead us on the road of sacrifice that in unity the face of Christ will be clear for all the world to see. Let the fragrance of our prayers arise, lead us on the road of sacrifice, that in unity the face of Christ will be clear for all the world to see. And so we come now to our time of intercession. Um, as we've done in previous weeks, if uh, you would wish to, um, simply just type. Uh, and um, as we pray together, uh, your words should come up just by the side of me here, uh, and we can engage together uh, in prayer. So we, um, we come to God uh, on this day in prayer. As I say the words, uh, Lord, hear us, will you please respond? Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's pray. Loving and holy God, as we come this evening, um, we ask for your presence, not only with us, uh, but within our communities as we continue through uh, this time of thy kingdom come we ask Lord that you may be present to those who have not yet heard your your word who have not yet had uh, the privilege to engage in that relationship with you Loving Lord be with them now allow your spirit to permeate them and us, that we may find life uh, and opportunity and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank uh, you, Lord, for uh, those within our community and elsewhere who are there to help and teach, for those, Lord, who, um, who are studying and engaging in learning and Lord we thank you for the opportunities that people have had to continue to do that in very specific ways over the last few weeks of lockdown uh, but we pray for those who return to school uh, to those who uh, at this time uh, are trying to find ways to allow for social distancing uh, in those uh, school environments and we pray for teachers uh, for kids uh, for parents uh, and their anxieties within all of this time we ask, Lord, for safety and security and for a sense of peace and your purpose in all that happens. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, uh, for those who are fearful at this time still, 
uh, for those who are uncertain and uh, frustrated by what they see in the news. Uh, Lord, for those who are unclear uh, about the guidance offered and those, Lord, who just wish that it would be over. May your spirit dwell amongst us and offer peace that through your loving kindness and your action of mercy our hearts may be lifted and our troubles eased. Amen. Loving Lord, we pray for those who um, are around us, those who govern us, uh, those who lead. Uh, we pray for those who support uh, and strengthen us, for those within uh, the NHS at this time, uh, for those who are in care. Lord, for those who become forgotten, uh, but still, Lord, are in the background making things happen for us. Uh, we thank you for each of them and ask your blessing upon them. Uh, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Finally, Lord, as we move towards uh, this time, this opportunity um, to know your spirit amongst us, may you open our hearts that through these next few days of prayer and reflection, we may come to know you and love you more. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Amen. So as we come towards the end of our service, it's a privilege for me to be able to say thank you to Andrew for uh, all that he's done to put this together uh, again. Uh, thank you to our Scratch Band and so on and so forth. Uh, I think Andrew is going to do some thanks at the end of the service. Um, so for the moment, uh, I simply um, just offer the chance uh, for us to, um, to begin our next uh, song. Uh, we're going to sing our final song together now. Um, uh, the words of which will be up on the screen. Uh, it's another by uh, Keith and Kirsten Getty. Uh, Hear the call of the kingdom. Those words uh, of, of the spirit moving us forwards uh, into this new step and stage of mission. Let's sing together. your eyes to the king let his song rise within you as a fragrant offering of how god rich in mercy came in christ to redeem all who trust in his unfailing grace hear the call of the kingdom to be children of light with the mercy of heaven the humility of Christ walking justly before him loving all that is right that the life of Christ may shine through us King of heaven we will answer the call we will find to come. Let the nations put their trust in us. King of heaven, we will answer the call. We will follow, bringing hope to the world, filled with passion.
So friends, I'm grateful to all those who have taken part this evening, to Simon for preparing much of our music, to David for preaching for us, for our local preacher colleagues for bringing us uh, those uh, words from the Bible. And now as we go for another week, a reminder that we have online services uh, in uh, various churches streamed online on YouTube from Helsby at 10.30 and from Frodsham uh, at half an hour earlier at 10 o'clock. And you'd be welcome to those and other services around our circuit. Now let's bless each other as we share together in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.